Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Chiropractic Student Podcast. Today we are joined by Dr. Tom Waller. Um, thank you for joining us today, Tom. It's great to be here, Lewis. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. I've been waiting for some time to be a guest, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I think I started this like as I started here, maybe a few months before. Um, and it's cool, today we're both in the same room doing this at work because I am Tom's associate up at Epoch in Lincoln. First and foremost, Give a little bit of a background about sort of who you are and what you do in chiropractic at the moment for us, please, Tom. Cool. So um, I'm obviously a chiropractor. Uh, I have a practice up here in Lincoln. Um, we've been in this practice for five years. Um, I graduated in 2010 from the ACC. Um, I've done pretty much everything you can do in chiropractic from being an associate to being the Vice President of the United Chiropractic Association, student representative for that uh, organisation as well. Um, I've, you know, worked solo. We've now got you guys as, as amazing associates. Um, I've travelled the world speaking about chiropractic. I've literally done everything there is to do with chiropractic. Um, but I think the thing I've learned the most through my whole journey is there's nothing better than standing at the table and working with the people in front of you. There you go, end of, end of podcast, he's done it all, there's nothing bad, he's, he's finished it. Um, that's cool, and obviously the podcast today is really to help students, new grads, or just lost people who don't really know their way in chiropractic, and you're so certain in what you do, mm -hmm. which is brilliant, but it must have taken some time to sort of get there. So what was that journey like in terms of, let's say, from... The moment you found out you wanted to be a chiropractor, what was that like? And then that journey going through, how did you find your certainty and what it is that made you the chiropractor you are today? I think it's brilliant. And this is some, it's what really ignited my fire to be so involved in the profession was, was figuring that out. Mm -hmm. So I got into chiropractic because my mum said it would be a good idea. <laughs> I was a Royal Marine Reservist and I wanted to be in the Marines effectively. That's what was my journey. Um, but mum said, why don't you try it? So I tried it. And um, I, I started in a practice with, with a great chiropractor who helped me out a lot, but I was bored. I was really bored. So I was doing these long appointments, not really understanding what I was doing yet. I was seeing these miracles that were happening in chiropractic. My understanding in chiropractic didn't match the miracles that I was seeing. I was like, well, how's this sort of therapy for somebody's back creating these amazing results that we're seeing? And I got bored, so I started to go on YouTube, I started to watch YouTube videos, um, I watched some of the, the original stuff that Billy DeMoss put out, and that just ignited a fire in me, and then I attended, I think, my first UCA conference, um, and then from then, it just there was no going back. Um, Is this after you graduated? Yeah, after so, I graduated. So, throughout university, were you very biomechanical? Oh my god, I was the, I was the mechanist, dude. I was I was the puppet on the str I was on I was the president of the student union at, at AECC. Yeah. I was the puppet on a string for the people who ran that that institution. I was always a rebel. I was always getting myself in trouble, but not the kind of violence mechanist. I was just, just, yeah, just yeah. a dick, really. Okay. <laughs> and I, I channeled that energy into. I actually did stand for something and. The boredom led me to find out really what chiropractic was after about two and a half years being in practice. And then that journey spiralled and then I had some amazing journeys with patients that really made me think, oh my God, this is something. And then I just wanted to tell the world. Um, and I told the world, uh, realised how much you can and can't say in the profession because we're hamstrung and, and uh, you know, our mouths bound occasionally. So I've kind of learnt the subtleties of that over the years, um, which is... <laughs> Got me to a place where I feel relatively stable. Um, in what I'm doing. So you say you watched a Billy DeMoss video. Yes. He's very outspoken. I like mm -hmm. watching his videos. Mm -hmm. um, but from there, you say it lit a, ignited a spark inside yeah. you. What did you do then? What was then the drive in you that you helped I grow I changed how I spoke. I changed how I spoke to patients at the time. So I was still working in that mechanistic practice. Mm -hmm. um, and this was in this city, so this was in this city 10 years ago, 12 years ago now. Uh, Christ, is it 13 years? I don't know, 12 years ago now. <laughs> so um, we have patients here now who've come back, and when, they, when they find out I was back in town, they've come back to this practice. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what you said about how when we adjust here it affects my organs 
changed my whole thinking about health and chiropractic. Yeah. So I wanted to come into your care again. So my conversation changed. The simplest thing I remember changing was every time I adjusted somebody's spine, I linked it to how the nervous system affects the organ health of the body, not just how they're feeling. And that was the simplest change I made at the start. And how did you get to that concept? Did you just get back to the whole neuroscientific side of things and say, Dude, well, I'm, not, I'm this not that academic. But like you were going to the nerve root and go, right, this nerve goes to the digestive yeah, system. Yeah, like an NS chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's an autonomic nervous system chart. And all, like, you've got one behind you there. Yeah. And it was as simple as, you know, this part of the spine connects to there. And it's basic stuff. It's not necessarily the complete truth. And we know that the adjustment really is affecting up in the brain. That can change all order of how the body works. And, and I'm happy to go into it more. But the basic start for me, just to start getting this understanding of something different, was to have that conversation. Going beyond pain and sensation. Yeah. Really. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And is there any pivot to... You said you went to the UCA conference. Mm -hmm. Are there any other um, seminars, conferences that you went to that were like, that you would recommend that you must do? It maybe as a starting point or something to really get you, get so you over the line. The UCA, com and the UCA conference is still great, but there was a time for about six years ago where it was, it was buzzing. Like it was the place to go. Hmm. And it's starting to get a resurgence of that actually, which is great. Cairo Europe was one I went to, and that really changed my life. Uh, I came back quite changed from that many years ago. Um, over the years, I've been to loads, and I, you know, I think those two are, are fantastic in Europe. And uh, Focus, I had the pleasure of speaking at Focus in the States, which is just an incredible conference, and um, and all those people out there are lovely. Uh, so you know, I'd encourage people just to get out there and experience as much as they can and connect as much as they can. Brilliant. Um, one thing that I like to ask is also more of a resource point of view. So you're very big on books now and you've got me a book and well, a few books now and had me read a few. How did you get into books mm -hmm. and which ones would you recommend people starting at if they wanted to find their passion in chiropractic as well? Cool. I love you asked that question. and. I don't think you can succeed in life if you don't read. Okay. I genuinely believe that. Now, this is coming from someone who was a dumb, dumb... I'm, I'm going to keep it clean. But I was so dumb at school. Dude. I hate reading. So dumb. I, w I had a reading age four years below my, my age when I was younger. Severely dyslexic. I've never sat an exam in a hall. I've always been in a special room and had extra yeah. time. Uh, reading was something I really struggled with. But... I can't remember what the first book I was given was. I think I just started getting into reading actually through... It was a Tony Robbins book was the first book I really got into. Tony Robbins book. And then I started reading chiropractic stuff. But the, the chiropractic books that I would recommend are... The, the, easiest, the easiest ones. One Cause, One Cure, Fred Barge. Straight up, I think, is the best chiropractic book to read. Um... 33 by David Serio, which is uh, multiple authors of another really good book. The Power of 33 um, by Donald Francis and uh, various authors as well is another really good book. So those are, those are where I would start with chiropractic reading. But I genuinely believe you cannot be successful if you do not read. There's something about getting your head in a book and absorbing the information um, and just having that quiet time. So even if it's just 10 pages a day, which is what I would commit to every day, um, as a minimum, uh, as a place to start. Okay. So there's a, uh, plenty of resources there to go off of um, and to start with. If you... Um, in terms of... I'm trying to think of how to word this question. So your favourite... You mentioned Billy DeMoss. You say you got bored at work, which made you seek out other things. What did you seek? Like, what was it that you searched for? Chiropractic on YouTube. Just literally chiropractic Yeah, but it's so different to what it is now. <laughs> like, it's like... I'm not a TikToker. Like, everything's yeah. like a two-minute video now. Like, I don't know what TikTok is, 30 seconds or whatever. Um, it used to be, like, there's the lay lectures on, on YouTube. The old-school ones, like... 
Sid Williams lay lecture at Parker University. There's some really great old stuff. Sigafoos, uh, some of his lectures on on YouTube. Um, Reggie Gold's lay lecture as well. These these are the things that really are the foundations of our profession. Um, that I think is such a great resource for people to, to, to watch and listen to. Those that that's the YouTube that I'm I'm. So I'm not looking. I'm not talking about our oh, crazy adjusting videos, which do a total disservice, I believe, to the profession. Yeah. Um, it's it's the old school lectures that I, that I really enjoy. I like that you. I think you made me watch. Um, not made me. Asked me to watch Chemistry of Life. That one. Yeah, that's a good the, one. Yep. With, um, I think that's really gold. Yeah. Okay, and it kind of brings me on to another one. People in chiropractic. Mm. Who are your Mentors as such, who do you look up to in chiropractic? Who do I look up to in chiropractic? Yeah. So many. Go on. So many. I would say some of the people who uh, I've really enjoyed the company of, really enjoyed the company of, who are doing great things. John Minardi, beautiful person, such a certain man, and just a, just a great guy. I really, I've got a lot of time for John. Uh, I love Brad, Brad Nowacki. He's a lovely person. He's got some great tips on communication. Uh, a nice chat this morning with Vismay. I love Vismay and the way he um, talks about running a calm and relaxed and thriving practice. Martin Harvey, he's a, a beautiful man over in Australia. He's got a really great um, plethora of information on communication. Uh, some of the people who come to mind, Tim Young as well. I'm going to forget Tim Young. He's just a beautiful soul. Um, his event focus and his group focus is, is, is really, really good. And with those people, is there stuff, resources and stuff online that we can have a little look at? And or... That I don't know 100%. Okay. I just know these people as acquaintances and friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I, know, I know Tim's got a program. I know all of them have got programs. Yeah. All of them have got programs. Um, I suppose it's just what, what stage are you at in your, in your career now? Are you looking for someone who's going to give you information on... Um, Technique, or you're going to give someone who's going to give you information on communication, running a practice, certainty, mm. whatever facet you're looking for, would it take who you go to? Um, you know, when the, that same when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Um, it's just choosing what you want to delve into right now. That's cool. Very long, you know, beat around the bush a bit there. You're playing very nice to everyone. I like mm-hmm. it. <laughs> um, if you had to say, are you a communication king? Are you a wicked adjuster? Are you a boss businessman? What what would you say is your expertise in this field? If you had to pick one, like what, what one? Yeah, what are people paying to come here for? Is it the well-run business? Is it your communication? Is it the adjustment? If you had to pick one, I would have said it's my communication. Mm-hmm. But as I think about it, a practice can simply cannot survive or thrive if the adjustment's not good enough. The adjustment. So I said my adjustment. And how important is that adjustment? It's it's everything. It's everything because you take this example. This is something I, I use when I teach. Is you go and buy a car, and you go and buy a car, and the salesman sells you this car. Yeah. And they sell you on the experience of the car. How amazing this car is going to be how good you're going to feel in the car, and they send you on your, on your emotions and your feeling. Mm-hmm. You then buy the car and you're passed over to the service department, and the service department don't quite live up to the sales department. Yeah, yeah. So now you're getting you know, people not calling you back when you're trying to book a service, or you know, suddenly you get these fees that you never really realized, um, the car doesn't perform as well as the sales guy said, and you get this complete mismatch, mismatch between the service, the salesman and the service provider. So is that like communication? Communication and yeah. Absolutely. And this is why you can't really, you, you can't really take one or the other, but if you really had to choose, it's got to be the adjustment because you can pull people in. There's so many tips and tricks and fancy things out there, which a lot of it I actually disagree with on bringing people into a practice. And then it just falls apart because you can't deliver on the adjustment. Or you've brought in a poor quality of person and you've told them you're going to fix their back pain, yet you're trying to run a vitalistic practice. Like, just the mismatch is there. So, I think if there's one thing um, that, that's most important, it's, it's the adjustment. Uh, and I, I genuinely believe my practice runs on that. Yeah. 
I agree. And let the hands and the adjustment do the talking. Yeah. That BJ Palmer quote, I think you say it, like, you, you can talk to a patient for 15 minutes and get them to like you, or you can give them one powerful adjustment and get them to love you. Yeah. And that's literally, the, it is the power of the well, on, I remember uh, I went to an Arno Bernie, I was fortunate enough to learn from him a while ago, and he said he practiced for a couple of years in silence, in complete silence. So cool. Which is cool, because your hands just do the talking. Yeah. Literally, yeah. just lay down. They know they're about yeah. to get the gist. Oh, brilliant. Um, you mentioned that you do a bit of teaching. Yes. Uh, what, what do you do? What do I do? I know what you do, but tell <laughs> yeah, me what, 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 what do you do. Um, I, um, as I said, I got really passionate in the profession to help people because I got bored and I got frustrated and I, I wasted several years of, of my practice career not helping people the way they should. And I also see there's a, there's a lot of great people out there who I've spoken about before, mm-hmm. but there's so many subscription services, marketing stuff, and it's all like, it's all very fluffy. And I don't think there's enough on just like, this is, this is how you really run a practice. This is how you really serve your people. So I've created this, uh, a movement and a community called ASC, Adjusting Skills and Certainty. Um, and the aim of this is to really give you everything you need to be a successful chiropractor. So I've created online courses. These online courses are one-time purchase, lifetime access. Mm. So there's no ongoing subscription. Um, you purchase the course and the lifetime access means everything that gets updated over time, you'll constantly get new and updated stuff. Um, I've put ev- literally everything that I have used to build this practice, um, which hopefully you can attest to, is, is a half-decent practice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> From day one, day two, um, communication, how to run a team, how to do your back office business stuff. Uh, I've got bonuses on there in public speaking and personal development. So literally everything you need to run a practice and some adjusting courses on there too. And I also do hands-on adjusting seminars um, as well. So everything you need to run a practice, ASCchiro.com. There you go. And I've done the online course the old version, the updated version, and you do update it, and I can literally vouch for that because I've done all the different ones. Mm-hmm. And also the adjusting courses, I know many of my friends have been on it and they, they loved it, but you do different types of courses as well. I currently do two courses, do fundamentals, which is essentially full spine adjusting. Yep. The aim of my, my courses is to teach you how to become a better adjuster. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really does. I mean, I've had people who are new in practice, but also people who've been in practice for 20 years coming on, and it really has changed how they practice. Um, and then I also do an upper cervical specific one. And this is it's upper cervical adjustments for the full spine chiropractor, really, yeah. um, is one of these, and shows you how, how to really focus on that upper cervical adjusting too. So they're the two that I've, I've got out. And do you enjoy doing it? Love it. <laughs> Just love seeing people change and knowing that they're going to go home uh, and change lives of, of, of more people. Yeah, it is, It's super rewarding to become the teacher at the end, isn't mm-hmm. it? And like your experience throughout, I think I think you've earned that. So. But I think we all teach. It's like, you know, even if this is new, you're a new graduate listening to this, you're a teacher to the person in front of you. That's what doctor is, isn't it? Exactly, what doctor is teacher. And they say teacher is always, what, the teacher is only, oh, a teacher told me this, a teacher is only one chapter ahead of the student. So we sometimes forget how much power we have to be able to influence and teach other people. We feel that we have to get so far on our journey before we can start. But you don't. You can literally start today with people who, who are closer to where you are, therefore are more likely to listen to what you say. Whereas if you are so much further on your journey, let's say you take this sloth of a man on his sofa uh, who doesn't look after himself very well, mm-hmm. and you come in as this super green vegan and tell him how to eat, mm-hmm. he's gonna go, get off, don't yeah. even care. Yeah. But if you came to him a little bit closer to where he was as someone who had just got off the sofa and started getting into exercise and eating better, he's more likely to listen to you. And the same is true for health and, and journeys and, and chiropractic. Um, it, you know, the time to start helping people is right now. Is that the same for like leaders in chiropractic? Do you think like, with you doing the teaching and like people like Tim Young and stuff, do you reckon they're like just one step ahead and they're, then they're trying to bring everyone else onto their level? Or? Uh, well, I can't say like. you know, Tim's like 20 years <laughs> yeah. um, I, the, the people I've mentioned just have a heart 
and hard to help. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just, they just. I think the people I've mentioned don't have any fancy tricks up their sleeves. They literally just show you what they got. Here it is. Congruency. Yeah. Okay. Tons of like juicy gold in there. I can't believe it's been twenty minutes already. Um, one thing I always like to ask is, if you had to get give a bit of advice to Tom at university. Um, you now, looking back, giving a bit of a premonition, what would you say to Tom or a new grad who's, who's maybe just starting maybe just starting university year one, year two, what would be your best bit of advice? Uh, don't care about what anyone else thinks. Um, do it anyway. <laughs> like we, we put off doing these things, trying these things, because we fear what other people will think about us. Like, I'm not going to talk about that because I worry about what someone's going to say. And that prevents us from really moving forwards. Like, I love being a super geek in practice. I love getting really enthused by what I do. Mm-hmm. But there was a time when I was younger where it wasn't cool. Or mm-hmm. I, I, I thought people would think differently of me if I did. Um, and I think if we lose that fear of what other people will think about us, then we have the potential to go so much further. I agree. I love that statement. That was nice. Very deep and meaningful there. Um, brilliant. And um, we'll sort of cut it off there. If people want to get in contact, um, where's the practice and how do they contact you? Cool. So the best way to get hold of me probably is social media. Yeah. Um, I'll pop uh, all the like, links to it. But yeah, so just... I've got a Tom Waller Facebook page. Tom Waller Instagram. You'll put the links below. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it. Don't worry. <laughs> and the website, if you, if you, on the website you can request a call, you can email me, you can book on the courses. It's ASC, Adjusting Skills and Certainty, ASCCairo.com. I'll pop that in there as well. Cool. Can people come and observe? Any time. Cool. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for coming on the podcast. It's been a long time coming, but I finally got some time with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.